Hey everybody, it's September the 1st and it's a bit cooler. So I've stuck this cardigan on this afternoon. I've had this for a number of years and in some ways it's a, a faithful companion for times when it's colder. Uh, even though there's a huge hole uh, in the elbow. Shh, don't tell anybody. I wonder what comes to your mind with the word faithful or faithfulness. Perhaps for some of us, we think of a, of a, a, a pet as, as a faithful friend, as a, a companion who's there. Maybe for many of us, we, we think of someone we love or we know who we consider to be faithful. Or perhaps, sadly, we've experienced the opposite. Someone who's been unfaithful in some way. Faithfulness. It's another of the fruit of the Holy Spirit that are mentioned in Galatians 5.22 in the New Testament. And I just want to take a few moments to talk about it this afternoon. Let's say, I wonder what comes to mind with the word faithfulness. In two Sundays time, I'm aiming to refer to these words from Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. In Psalm 33, verse four, we read these words, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He's faithful in all he does. Later in the Psalms, in Psalm 145, verse 13, we can read this. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and he's loving towards all he has made. In one of the parables, the stories that Jesus told, he referred to a boss, to a master uh, with his servants. And, and speaking to those servants who'd been reliable, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. He doesn't say, for instance, well done, good and outwardly appearing successful servant. It's faithfulness that is mentioned in the story. Faithfulness, like the other fruits of the Spirit, reflects something of the character of God at work within people's lives. I find it interesting that in Galatians 5.22, that the Greek root word that we have as faithfulness is the word pistis, which often is translated as faith. But here in this context, virtually all Bible translations translate it as faithfulness. Uh, and that's true in other places in the Bible and the New Testament as well. It really depends on the context. There are clearly occasions where it makes far more sense that the word is faithfulness and not faith. Example, another example is Romans 3 verse 3. The question is asked, will their lack of faith or their unbelief nullify God's faithfulness? The word faithfulness there again is pistis. It doesn't mean though God's faith. God doesn't need faith. God doesn't need to have faith in himself. Faith is to be persuaded and in scripture it refers to being persuaded trusting in God. Well God's not in some state of cosmic flux. He's not going oh do I trust myself or not? He's not torn like that. Uh, dare I say, it, he's not like some kind of Smeagol Gollum character, like in Lord of the Rings, where it seems to be all this double mindedness that, like there is in that character. I want to suggest, though, there is a link between our active trust, our being persuaded by God, having faith and the fruit of faithfulness in our lives. And maybe that's a good thing to reflect on. And actually, I think. When it comes to any of the fruit of the Spirit, there is a connection between that and our openness to God, openness to the Holy Spirit being at work in our lives. But hey, what about the dictionary or a dictionary definition of faithfulness? I looked up the Merriam-Webster uh, definition or definitions online. Let me just read them to you. I'll give a definition and they give an example. Firstly, steadfast in affection or allegiance. Example, a faithful friend. Secondly, firm in adherence to promises or in, obs in observance of duty. Example, a faithful employee. Thirdly, given with strong assurance. Something like a faithful promise. And fourthly, true to the facts, true to a standard or to an original. A faithful copy. 
like all the other fruit of the Holy Spirit, I believe faithfulness is something that we can grow in. And we can ask the Holy Spirit's help for this, to keep true to our calling and follow in Christ, to keep firm to our commitment. And let's face it, all kinds of life challenges can come along to shake that sense of commitment. Well, maybe it's just me, but I know that can be true in my case. For us to be true to allowing his life to be at work in and through us. I, I like this dictionary uh, definition, this thought of, of faithful being a true copy. Sometimes since I'm a church minister, people ask me to sign for their UK passport uh, applications. Uh, and part of that is that the, the little photo uh, that's going to get added in. Um, I have to sign the back of it and it says I, I have to write I certify this is a true likeness of and then whoever the person's name is. You know, there's a sense that growing in the fruit of faithfulness is growing to being more like a copy of the life of Christ, both in our lives and before others. Not that it's about us being pious or holier than thou to others, or judgmental of other people, or anything like that. No, no, no way. And nor does it mean that we lose our individuality. I don't think following Jesus means that everyone becomes a clone of each other, and it's just bland, and it's lifeless, and personality is lost, and, uh, and different creativity, and, and strengths, and, and so on. But you know, I do believe a sense of faithfulness includes our being more Christ-like in our lives. And with faithfulness, there can be things that are toxic in our lives that make it harder to be faithful. You know, are there any, any, any unhelpful habits in our lives or addictive behaviours, ongoing giving into wrongdoing, that in some way is causing us to be unfaithful? Not necessarily in relation to sex, though it could be to do with that. Perhaps it's unfaithfulness in terms of honesty or reliability, financial integrity in keeping a secret or in many other ways that perhaps we could be unfaithful. Or maybe there's a sense of unfaithfulness in terms of us not keeping true to what we say are our own internal values. You know, addictive habits can beat us up. For instance, pornography, besides having all kinds of other toxic impact and, uh, you know, reducing uh, people to objects of lust, can be a real destroyer of internal integrity. You know, there are toxic habits or, or addictive behaviours. Is this hidden from everyone else? Will we ask God for the courage to open up about these things and seek help? I believe freedom is possible. Scripture says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It may not be a quick journey, of course, and it may be painful. And perhaps that's why we try and avoid it. I know where there's been addictive behaviour in my own life. It, it, it was to cover over pain, pain that I couldn't face. And I share that because maybe someone else needs to hear that today. I want to encourage us to open up, both in asking God through prayer for help and also if needed, not, not just to talk with friends and with people we can trust. Maybe we sometimes we need to seek professional help. You know, in my own life, I, I'm really grateful for you know praying to God and the help of scripture, uh, for my wife, for friends, but for professional help too. And, and even aspects of my life where medication has helped me in my journey of facing up to different things, to difficult things in my life. You know, maybe as you've listened to this talk today on faithfulness, you weren't expecting it to end up where I've brought it to. Perhaps you feel you've not kept to faithfulness in your life in some way. Maybe you're feeling condemned about that even. Or perhaps, and I think this is important to recognise as well, you've been let down by the unfaithfulness of someone else. And in some cases, it's been deeply hurtful. I'm really sorry if that's the case. And I don't want to diminish that pain in any way. And I recognise that to come to a place of healing, again, it may take some time. 
But if it's eating you up, who could you open up to? I would encourage you to do so. And there's maybe all kinds of aspects to that, which I can't go into now. But I encourage you. God's faithful. He's trustworthy. We can open up and we can find people that we can trust to talk to. I didn't write this in the notes. Maybe it's actually God whom you feel isn't faithful. You've prayed about something. You've been seeking about something. You've been trusting him and you feel that you've been let down. I also want to acknowledge that as a draw towards a close. And again, if it's the case, can you be honest with someone about it? There's plenty of Psalms where people are, the writers are really, really honest with God about stuff, crying out to him. Like, what's going on? Hmm. Where to finish? I hope these words, which are possibly from an early Christian hymn, may be some help. The Apostle Paul quotes these in 2 Timothy 2, 13. And of Christ, the song says this, If we're faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself he who promised is faithful words of hebrews 10 he will remain faithful these words in 2 timothy 2 i believe faithfulness is a fruit that we can grow in faithfulness is something which can have a real impact into wider society faithfulness is something that reflects the heart and the character of god and we can come to him where we may maybe feel that we've not been faithful. We can come to him about where others have been unfaithful to us. And I also think we can be very real with God where maybe we feel he's unfaithful. I don't know where you fall in any of those possibilities today. But faithfulness, I really want to encourage you to think about it, to pray about it, maybe talk with others about it. And consider how that fruit can really make a difference in and through our lives. Thanks for listening.